with the new version 2.0 update for the Sony FX3, Sony has really elevated this camera and taken it to another level. But as amazing as this camera may be, it's not as efficient as it can be right out of the box. So today, I'm going to show you how I set up my custom buttons on my FX3 to make all the most important features super easy to access and change on the fly, including some of the new features that are included in this version 2.0 update. So first things first, we're going to hit menu, then scroll on down to setup, and then choose operation customize. From there, we'll go ahead and choose the second option with the video camera icon called custom key dial set. And this takes us to our main custom button setup screen. So if you notice on the camera itself, there are six buttons on the rear to customize, five buttons on the top to customize, one button on the front, one button on Sony lenses, and three dials and wheels to customize. So let's start with the rear. So for spot number one, we'll select focus magnifier. So I think it is great to just keep that as that option because the button on the back of the camera actually says focus mag on it. So it seemed like it was intended for that use. So I figured why change it up? Why confuse it by putting something else at that button? Next at spot number two, we're gonna set this to base ISO switch. So this will essentially switch between the two base ISOs that the camera supports, 800 and 12,800. Next is spot number three, and we're gonna choose select LUT. So that'll allow you to select any custom LUTs that you may have installed onto your camera. So if you have turned it on to be able to preview your footage with LUTs on, that is where you'll be able to easily select from a whole list of up to 16 custom LUTs. Next at number four, we have zebra display select. So this just lets you turn on your zebras so you can help meter your exposures. And at number five, we're gonna choose peaking display select. So that will just allow you to turn on your focus peaking so you can easily see what's in focus. And finally at spot number six, we're gonna choose metering mode. So that will allow you to change the metering mode when you are trying to do your exposures. So these are all different settings or features that I typically do play around with and change as I am shooting on a job or while I'm filming a project. So these are things that I don't want to be fumbling through menus to find. And by assigning these to these custom buttons, it makes it very, very easy to just select them and change them as you want to. All right, so I know that was a lot of different customizations we were able to do on the back of the camera here, on the rear of the camera. And you probably could stop there because that was quite a bit and it really did cover a lot of the basics and a lot of the most widely used settings or features that you might want to change on the fly. But we could go a little bit further. So if you stay with me, we'll cover all the other sections of this camera that you can still customize buttons for. But before I jump right into that, I just wanna take a moment to talk about why and how it's important to customize other aspects of your life that both relate to your work and your creative endeavors you do, as well as your personal life. Optimizing your cameras and your gear, like we're talking about here today, is to help make your workflow while you're filming much easier and better. So you're trying to optimize that whole experience, that whole setup, to make it much easier and quicker for you to be filming and changing settings as you need to on the fly. But this type of optimization shouldn't be just for your gear when you're working. You can optimize a lot of other aspects of your work life and personal life as well. From optimizing your desk setup or your workspace to optimizing your YouTube studio or where you film your videos and even your wardrobe. It's important to make sure all these things are optimized to be as best as they can to make you as successful as you can be. So that brings me to talking about Cuts Clothing, which you will always see me outfitted in. Cuts has a huge offering of anything from t-shirts to polos to sweatshirts to shorts and even pants. And they've actually just released their new fall collection. So you can check that out on their website at cutsclothing.com. But Cuts will actually be dropping their new anniversary collection on August 15th to celebrate their sixth year anniversary. And to help celebrate this, they will be having a huge sale from August 15th to August 25th. This is Cuts' biggest sale ever with 25 to 50% off site-wide. So you're not gonna wanna miss this sale because they have a ton of stuff that will really help you where you can get outfitted to look fantastic and awesome and professional for anything from business meetings to shoots to even going out for dinner at night. So don't forget to head on over to the link down in the description down below to check out custom clothing and check out that awesome sale. But enough of that, let's jump right back into how you can finish customizing the buttons on your FX3. All right, now let's jump into the top. At spot number one, we're gonna assign it to focal length, which is the focal length of the lens you're currently using. And that is going to be useful because the camera needs to know what focal length you have for your lens so that it will compensate correctly when you're using the in-body image stabilization or IBIS. At spot number two, we're gonna set that to white balance. That's because it already has a WB symbol at the top there, which means it seems like Sony intended for that to be a white balance button. So it's very easy to look at that and say, great, that's for white balance. It's labeled that, so I will never forget that that is how I adjust my white balance. At spot number three, we're going to assign it to ISO slash EI. So that will just let you choose from all the different ISOs depending on the mode you're in. So I have my camera settings set to Cine EI, which I did discuss in a previous video where I talked about all the new features in the Sony FX3 version 2.0 update. So by having it in that mode, it actually allows me to just toggle between the two base ISOs of the camera very easily. 
So when you're in one of the two, it actually has a range of ISOs that you can choose between. So if you set this custom button to ISO slash EI, it'll allow you to choose all the different ISOs under that specific base ISO that you're currently set to. And for spot number four, we're gonna assign it to AF slash MF selected toggle. So this just basically allows you to toggle between autofocus or manual focus, depending on if your lens is support that. And at spot number five, we have it set to movie shooting. So that's basically your record button when you're in movie mode. This button actually says record at the top and it actually glows red when you do hit the record button. So I wouldn't change that setting. I would just leave that as record. And now jumping on over to the front of the camera, there is one custom button there and that is currently set to movie shooting as well. So you can also set this anything you want, but I think it's great to have that button at the front also allow you to be able to start recording since if you are filming a YouTube video, something like this, it's very easy as you're walking around the camera at different spots to be able to just click that button from the front instead of having to go on top of the camera or somewhere at the back to initiate recording. Now let's talk about the lenses. So there's one custom button on, I believe some Sony branded lenses. Now I don't have any of those lenses with me to be able to test that on my own, but I do know some of those lenses do have their own custom button on there. So we just have that typically set to focus hold. So that'll just hold the focus for you. And finally, we're gonna go to the dials and wheels section. And there are three different options to customize here. So for the first one, we're gonna set it to AV, which changes the aperture if you have a lens that supports that. At spot number two, we're gonna choose ISO slash EI. So again, that'll just adjust the ISO by turning that wheel and changing that dial. And spot number three, I'm gonna choose TV, which just changes the shutter speed. So if you want quick access to change the shutter speed, that's exactly how you'll do that. So there you have it. That is how I set up the custom buttons on my Sony FX3 to be an efficient camera for my every need. Now, I know you can set this up in one of a million ways, but I just thought I would share with you how I set up my custom buttons because I really think it's a good setup and I think it might be beneficial for you to see exactly how I've set mine up. So what do you think about how I set up my custom buttons and would you do anything different? Let me know in the comments down below. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for some more Sony FX3 content because I will be putting out more content soon specifically related to this camera and lots of other things related to filmmaking. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to check back again.